What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the FA-18C Hornet for another tutorial video. In this one we're going to take a look at some more air-to-ground weapons, specifically the AGM-65 Maverick. Now the Hornet has two flavors of the Maverick. It has the AGM-65F, which is a uh, sort of optically IR guided uh, variant and we have the AGM 65E which is a laser guided variant and we're gonna check out both flavors today so firstly let's use the Maverick F or the IR guided variant so as with everything we want to get our master arm on get ourselves into air to ground mode and then from our stores management page here, we have Mav F and Mav. We want to select Mav F and then click it again. And the Maverick itself does require some time to actually warm up or in fact cool down the seeker head, as you can see there, before we actually get a video picture here. So stand by while that happens. It should take about three minutes. All right, so we've got a picture now, as you can see. The Maverick itself, essentially, when it's in this mode, it acts like a sort of its own personal targeting pod. We can slew this Maverick Seeker head around by first assigning the TDC to this DDI using sensor control switch to the left. As you can see, we have the diamond. We want to make sure it's uncaged. We can use our cage uncage button to cage the Maverick or uncage it. And we can slew it around by using TDC. Now, the thing with this as compared to something like the targeting pod, in order to slew the Maverick seeker head around, you have to press and hold TDC depress. If you release TDC depress, the Maverick stops moving around. So one thing to bear in mind there with how the Maverick is moved, Press and hold TDC depress, and then you can slew it around using the TDC uh, stick. Now, a couple of things on the Maverick screen itself. I'm just going to halt my camera there for a moment. Got a couple of fusing options. You've got instantaneous fusing options, so it will detonate on impact. Delay 1 and Delay 2, so delay fusing for the Maverick. You also have a uh, ship mode. Now what this does is it changes the guidance parameters of the Maverick while it's in flight, uh, specifically for use against enemy ships. The Maverick F is technically a naval variant of the Maverick, and it uh, has anti-ship capabilities. And what this uh, causes it to do, if we were to box the ship option, is it causes the Maverick to try to strike the ship at the waterline rather than just straight on uh, in order to cause the most damage and potentially sink the ship. We've got some other options here. We have track white or track uh, black. Um, that doesn't change the uh, sort of white hot or black hot uh, parameters like with the targeting pod. <clears throat> with the Maverick, it is always in a white hot sort of setup but it can uh, track a black or a white object with that. That also changes the symbology a little bit. We can step through the different Mavericks. I've got two of them on right now, so you can go Station 8, Station 2, etc. We can change the FOV, and the FOV box is denoted by this square here. You can also change the FOV with the POTAS function using the scan slash raid slash FLIR FOV button on your HOTAS. Now, let's actually find some targets to fire the Maverick at. What we're going to do is we're going to slew the Maverick over the target, and if the Seeker Head finds a appropriate contrast lock, it will automatically lock onto that target and we will be able to fire. We will know it has a contrast lock if the Maverick's seeker head gates on this targeting reticle here close. There you can see them here. 
when they close and the little cross that's floating around starts flashing. So let me find some targets to shoot at and we will test it out. All right, I've got some targets off to uh, my rear quarter here. So I'm going to kick off the autopilot, the auto throttle, and turn back this way. Mavericks don't like to be fired from very high altitude. Uh, they don't get the same kind of range like other long range air to ground missiles do. So I'm below 10,000 feet for this example. Quick pause real quick, I just want to look at the HUD. Notice this upside down triangle here. This is the HUD symbology for where the Maverick is actually pointed. So you can use this here to visually guide the Maverick onto the target. Uh, and this is going to be useful in this case because um, slewing the Maverick around is a bit imprecise using this to get it roughly in the right area and then using your screen to actually lock up the target is what I've found to be one of the best methods. So let's unpause here and see what we can actually do. There are some targets off in the distance there. All right, slewing, going FOV. And I believe I have a lock. The gates have closed. Altitude. Altitude. Yep, that is a lock. So if I press and hold weapon release, that's rifle. Let's see if we can rifle another one. There we go. Gates have closed. Rifle two. Let me watch the Maverick fly in. Boom. Good for blowing up tanks. Can lock onto moving targets and things of that nature. All right, let's get back up to altitude uh, and get turned around because we're going to try the other flavor of the Maverick, the laser guided Maverick. So stand by while I get uh, back up to about 8,000 feet and into a stable orbit around these targets. All right, so laser-guided Mavericks. Uh, as the name implies, we're going to be using a laser target designator to actually guide the Maverick onto target. The symbology is a little bit different. The screens look a little bit different. Plus, we're going to be using, for this example anyway, our own targeting pod to actually guide the Maverick onto the target with our laser. You could also use a JTAX laser or a Buddy Laze, and in fact, uh, at least in the case of the Mavericks, those might be actually a little bit easier to use uh, simply because you don't have to laze the target yourself uh, and you can then just simply fly away after you fire. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll use our own targeting pod for this example. So uh, let's set up our targeting pod first and foremost on our right DDI here. Let's select FLIR as we have before. So we've got our targeting pod already warmed up. I'm going to get it into white hot FLIR mode. We need to get our laser target designator switch down here into the arm position. And we need to box trig. All of this is just like we did for the laser guided bombs. All right. Now that that is done, let's denote that our laser code is currently 1688. This is going to be important here. We shot our MAV Fs before, and now we're going to shoot our just MAV. Uh, for whatever reason, the AGM 65E is denoted by just MAV on our SMS, so let's select it. And take a look here. We have uh, laser codes that we can program into the Mavericks. Currently, they're set to 1111. But, I'm just going to halt the screen there. If we select UFC, select code, our laser code in our targeting pod is 1688. So we go 1688 on the UFC. And then hit enter. And that programs in the laser code to both stations. And if we had all four stations with Maverick E's, the laser Mavericks, 
it would program all four stations as well. Uh, unlike the laser guided bombs where you have to program the stations individually, the Mavericks are a little bit easier in that regard. Now, now that we've programmed in the laser code, if we select the Maverick button again, we're now presented with this screen. This is the actual laser tracker that we see. We have the fusing options that we had with the IR Maverick as well. Instantaneous delay one, delay two. We do not have an anti-ship option with the Maverick E. So bear that in mind that uh, this is not a, uh, it's not as well suited to blowing up ships as the AGM 65 F. We can change our laser codes from this screen as well. We can cage uncage the Maverick Seeker head just like with the laser guided, or uh, correction, just like with the IR guided Maverick. Uh, and we will need to cage uncage once we detect the laser target designator. So in order to get all that in motion, we need to find a target with our targeting pod. And to make things easier, I'm going to fly around and get myself into an active pause while we're facing these targets. So stand by. All right, so we're in an active pause facing some targets over here. A little bit unrealistic because um, you're obviously not going to be in an active pause in a real mission. But uh, for the purposes of demonstration, this works out just fine. So we need to find the targets with our targeting pod. The way we do that, of course, we need to assign our TDC to the targeting pod screen with sensor control switch to the right. We can then slew this guy around and look for those targets. All right, there they are. Let's zoom in and pick one. How about this guy? We'll get him into a point track. And then as with our laser guided bombs, we need to actually engage our laser with the trigger. So now we have LTDR on that screen. Now, in order to actually fire the Maverick, let's go over and look at our Maverick screen. Notice how the X in the center of the reticle is flashing. That means it sees a laser, but it can't actually lock onto it. What we need to do is uncage it. And now it's found the laser. Notice how it's changed to a box. We have Maverick locked on the HUD here. And we are basically ready to fire. So we can go rifle. And hopefully that works. Looks to be tracking. Splat. Very nice. And you can see it on our targeting pod there as well. All right, so that's a good look, a uh, real basic look at using the two Maverick variants of the Hornet. Um, once again, using your own targeting pod for the laser guided Mavericks is a little bit unwieldy. Um, normally for most uh, realistic scenarios, if you were using laser guided Mavericks, you would have an offboard laser designator, but for the purposes of this demonstration, using our own targeting pod worked out well. So uh, that's all I really have to say on Mavericks. Uh, they're pretty simple to use for most cases, but uh, do get out there and practice with them, and I will see you next time. Take care.